Hi, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a condition that you have called dry eye. I have a, a transcript or a handout I can give to you when we're done if you'd like it. Okay? Many things cause dry eyes. The best treatment for dry eyes is to do all of the things that you can to treat your dry eyes because no single thing is usually effective. It's best to treat the different elements that contribute to a dry eye. Dry eyes can be from not making enough of the water parts of your tears, uh, but it's also possible that you can get a dry eye from not having the right amount or kind of oils that are in the eyelid, which helps to keep the water part from just evaporating into the air. It's like a little oil slick on your eye. And you can have plenty of water, not enough oil, and have a very dry eye. So we have to get all of those things. The water parts of your tears are made from what you drink. Beverages with caffeine actually make dry eyes worse. Caffeine is a drug that tricks your kidneys into releasing a larger amount of fluid than you drink in. The same is true for coffee, tea, chocolate, and all of the different kinds of beverages uh, that might have caffeine in them. I would recommend that you decaffeinate, but do it slowly. For the first couple of weeks, I'd drink half as much of what you normally drink that has caffeine in it, and then the other half decaffeinated. Then, each week, cut the amount of caffeinated stuff that you drink in half until you're maybe only drinking one or two caffeinated beverages per day. The same thing is true of alcohol. Alcohol is a drug that tricks your kidneys into releasing more fluid than you drank in. For every beer or cup of coffee you drink, your body actually gets more dehydrated. So limit your intake of alcohol to no more than one to two ounces per day for men and one ounce a day per, uh, for women. One glass of wine, one beer, and one shot of hard liquor each have about an ounce of alcohol in them. Now on the other side, the oil producing glands of your eyelids make a secretion from the food that you eat. And if you eat mostly meat, then the fats that you eat will be thicker, like the fat on a steak, and the oil glands will try and make an oil from that uh, thick uh, fat to make a liquid oil, and they don't do such a very good job, and so the secretions tend to clog more easily. A clogged gland will not release the right amount of oil, and since it isn't flowing, bacteria will grow in the clogged oils and cause an infection called blepharitis or mybomitis. The key is to eat oils that are liquid at room temperature, like salad oil, olive oil, and fish. If you don't like these foods, taking a supplement called an omega-3 fatty acid is a very good idea if your primary care doctor uh, will let you do that. This is available without a prescription at most grocery stores and pharmacies. Most people take fish oil, flaxseed oil, or krill oil. There's another one that's good. The, use, the usual dose for fish oil is about 1,000 milligrams per day. Now, lubricating your eyes with artificial tears is also recommended. You can use these kinds of drops at least four times a day or more often as needed if you use the right kind. And we will give you a, a little piece of paper that tells you what brands are recommended, and we'll give you a, a sample if we have one to do so. This will help you to avoid the symptoms of dry eye. Other people will just use artificial tears when their eyes feel dry. So you can either stay ahead of it by trying to prevent the symptoms or react to it when your eyes are uncomfortable. Either way, remember to close your eyes for three full minutes with every drop that you put in without blinking at all, and that will help that drop to soak in and do its work best. Um, do not use brand names that include Visine, Murine, and Clear Eyes because those preparations usually actually make your eyes less healthy and more dry. We also recommend keeping your eyelid glands opening free of debris and free of makeup because anything that's on the opening of the gland will cause the oils to be less able to get out. So before you go to bed, uh, and after you take your makeup off, if you wear makeup, I would get a clean, soft washcloth, get it nice and wet and warm, and hold it up against your eyelids for maybe 15, 20 seconds, and do that a couple of times, and then after that, take the washcloth, put a little baby shampoo on it, and do a little scrub. If you wear makeup, 
I bet you that whatever you do to take your makeup off, when you do the lid scrub, you'll see that there's some stuff that's on the washcloth. And that stuff will clog the glands, and at least while you're sleeping, those glands will have a chance to flow. And if the glands flow, there'll be less likelihood that the germs will be uh, able to, to, to grow in those secretions, okay? Um, I also have a product that I use for blepharitis that I can uh, share with you. You don't have to use it, but it works very well. So these are all the things we recommend for initial treatments of dry eye. Dry eye is one of the most common things I take care of, and there are lots and lots of other things that are available from uh, drugs you buy from the pharmacy that boost your tear production to little plugs you put into the drainage system that blocks the disappearance of your own tears to tears that are made or artificial tears that are made out of your own bloodstream, the fluids in your bloodstream. Plus, if people have a dry eye and it really bothers them, we do clinical trials for dry eyes all the time. So if you'd like to be in a clinical trial for dry eyes, just let me know and we can help you with it. Remember, the more different parts of this that you do, the more likely you're going to be successful. Thank you.